Since our most recent video, we've had over 30,000 new people come on board. When issues come up in our sphere, we cover them because we are a gaming channel. But today, we get to do what it is that we do again. Hello, and welcome to Treesicle. I'm Grant, we're happy to have you. Today, I'd like to take you back to one of our favorite franchises, back to the land of Hyrule. The Legend of Zelda was the first game to bring us into a world that was simply open for us to explore, to learn about and traverse at our own speed. It was a fantasy within a square plastic box that stood as the beginning of something more for not only video games, but for its own franchise creator and company. For me and many others, the series was our first real test in gaming. For over 30 years, it's been explored, poked at, analyzed, and and yes, we still have the balls to think we can bring something new to the table, because we can. So sit back, relax, and prepare yourself for metaphysical truths distilled into a single symbol, for a balance of virtues maintained by the gods themselves. This is the story of the Triforce, the story you never knew. One sec, I've gotta kill this dragon. Uh, uh, just kidding, it just wrecked me. Guys, this video is sponsored by our friends over at Raid Shadow Legends. This game is awesome, I've been loving it, and I think you'll love it too. Forget everything you think you know about mobile games, because this is one of the most ambitious RPGs of 2019. Playing Raid is the most immersive experience you'll find in a mobile game, and it seriously looks like it was made for PC or console. I've been hooked on it for weeks now, and the best part is, it's totally free. It's got an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, addictive gameplay, badass boss fights, and hundreds of champions for you to find and customize. Look how crazy the level of detail is on these champions. Raid is getting big real fast, so get in early and you can join the upcoming special launch tournament with crazy prizes. So go to the description of this video now and download Raid only through my link to get 50,000 silver for free and also an epic champion. You'll get those as a thanks from me and their dev team. I think you'll like it. Now let's get back to it. La la. In 2014, we did a video called Link, the story you never knew. It was one of our first and it did well, but that was a long time ago. As a group, we've aged and matured as writers, editors, and... Oh, that sound! Oh, I'm so satisfied right now! Oh, what was I saying? Uh, uh, yes, we've matured. Back then, we talked about how Link is a link to our nostalgia. That's true, hence my splooge of endorphins from hearing that sound about five seconds ago. However, the Zelda franchise is too big for a simple analysis. So, let's start with the timeline. Not! That would be too easy! The timeline is obvious, so obvious! A little baby could understand it! Are you little babies? No, or at least not hopefully, because whenever a baby watches our videos, their moms get us age-gated because they aren't capable of parenting. This is the baby warning. Get out of here, babies. So... How about that Triforce? It's a funny thing, this Triforce. So simple, yet so profound. Also, it's inaccessible to new fans. It is inarguably the most important part of the Legend of Zelda series, but it is often overshadowed by the franchise's characters. Most people think the games are about Link, Zelda, and usually Ganondorf, but sometimes other not Ganondorfs. But it's not! It's about the Triforce. Let me elaborate smoothly into your your ears. This triangle of triangles is in fact the oldest piece of Hyrule we have to look at, being formed at the start of the realm's existence. As Din, the goddess of power, formed the land, Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, blessed it with law, and Pharaoh, the goddess of courage, filled it with life. As they departed Hyrule, they left behind the Triforce, a golden triangle made out of triangles with an upside-down triangle 
triangle in the center. Geometric god art. Pretty good on that. Each triangle represents its respective goddess and her attribute, i.e. power, courage, and wisdom. Also, they didn't exactly leave it behind like that lady that pooped on the floor at the airport. They placed the Triforce in the Sacred Realm, which is, you know, somewhere. It's also a very sensitive place. Very moody. If you go in and are all pure, the place becomes a paradise. If you're an evil asshole, like, I don't know, the YouTube copyright system, the Sacred Realm will be corrupted by your pathetic petty mind. The pieces of the full Triforce are separated from being touched by one with an imbalanced heart. The toucher will keep the piece most closely associated with their personality. And the rest of the Triforce will seek out befitting hosts embedding in their wielder the virtues of the goddess associated with their peace. When all three triangles are united, the Triforce will grant a wish. But it's all divine and not self-aware. It can't see good from evil, so it'll grant any wish. It's kind of like the Dragon Balls, but a, a better example would be nuclear energy. Good when it works, lots of weird looking fetuses when it doesn't. Apparently a fourth, more shoehorned in goddess was left behind as well, named Hylia. It was her job to protect the Triforce, which is pretty cool of her. When something as cool as wish-granting triangles exists, it makes sense to go after them. Get your wish and all. I would wish for free Chipotle for life. Thought you might be interested in that. Wisdom for correct food choice, courage for eating that much Mexican food, and power for expelling it. However, just like what would happen in real life, a giant douche shoot demon king named Demise, who you may recall looks like an avocado with legs, goes after it to destroy everything because he was crazy and an avocado, the most vile of the fruits. Do you know how many millennials don't have houses because of avocados? Hylia protects the Triforce and takes her people into the sky, sealing away Demise and creating the goddess sword for the eventual chosen hero to fight him in case he comes back. Why can't anyone ever make an unbreakable seal? Why didn't Ilya wish on the Triforce to get rid of Demise? Why can't the gods just get stuff over with right away? Who knows? Either way, then she discarded her divinity to be reborn among the Hylians of Skyloft for reasons. Mainly more games, I assume. Just like the goddess predicted, Demise returns. She gets reborn as the first Princess Zelda and a young hot androgynous AF boy in a silly green hat becomes the chosen hero. A twink hero. A twiro. Apparently his name is Link. I always thought his name was Grant Dong. Why give me a choice if the name is canon? The three do the fighting and the Triforce is safe. Then Demise says, I'll be back to get you. And then Link and Zelda are reincarnated forever and ever to fight Demise's rage. Or, I don't know, have fun adventures revolving around hats or a sword that makes four Naruto shadow clones? By the way, this lore comes from Aaron Hansen's favorite game of all time, the Skyward Sword. I agree, the most controls really make the game best in the series what really gets me through is still the triforce for a series that's chronology was slapped together with flex tape about 14 games in 25 years after its initial release the triforce stands out as one of the most well thought out symbols maybe ever at least one of the best in any game especially considering what it's linked to pun retroactively intended despite not being an active part of all zelda titles, see fun adventures with hats, spoopy mask time, and weirdo land fun with trains, and even Breath of the Wild, the Triforce is inarguably responsible for everything that takes place in the series. But what makes it great is its design. And I'm not talking about some fun geometry. The Legend of Zelda is a game made by a Japanese man based in a western setting with a mix of Japanese and western fantasy archetypes. It's an amalgamation of cultures, as is the Triforce. Force, the franchise's symbol and linchpin. Take it away and you have no story. It stands to represent the goddesses that created the realms, but it also stands as a driving force for the conflict within the story, as well as much, much more. Let's break it down. You have the Triforce. Split that up and you have Tri, Three, and Force. 
a power. You could say it differently as the power of three. Literally, this is referencing the goddesses which created Hyrule and sent this story spinning into action. But have you ever looked into the power of three? No, I'm not referencing Schoolhouse Rock because 90% of our audience won't get that. I'm literally talking about the power of the number three. Is this your face right now? Yeah, numbers have always been tied to properties larger than themselves. Sim, sim, sim. And three is not only without exception, but is one of the most important and powerful numbers in history. Let's start simple. Three is the lowest number of lines to create a polygon, aka the triangle, which is also the most stable shape structurally. Three is the lowest amount of people you can have to take a vote or make a party. And three is also the only number which is the sum of all the numbers before it. That's some basic three stuff. Don't worry, it gets weirder. According to many religions, there are three planes of existence. Heaven, Earth, and Hell. It takes three non-collinear points to determine a circle. There are three daily meals, and any number whose digits add up to a number divisible by three is itself divisible by three. Humans are trichromatic, meaning we have three cones in our eyes, which allows us to see color. There are also three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, which when mixed create all other colors. Three is known as the number of time, past, present, future, birth, life, death beginning, middle, and end. Also shown in the number of the triple goddess, which represents the maiden, mother, and crone. I even have triple goddess symbol in my room. This symbol is often affiliated with Wicca. Uh, I'm not Wiccan though. Speaking of paganism, let's not forget about the karmic rule of three, that whatever actions you do will be given back threefold. It's said that the third try is lucky, and it takes three attempts to succeed. Want to get into some weird religious stuff? Three represents the Holy Trinity, et pater, et fili, et spiritus sancti. Jesus came back from the dead after three days. Satan tempted Jesus three times. How about the triple gem of Buddhism? The Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, aka the Enlightened One, the Teachings, and the Practitioners. In Shintoism, there are the three sacred treasures. The sword, Kusu no Wangi, the mirror, Yauta no Kagami, and the jewel, Yawasangni no Mahagantama. These three represent valor, wisdom, and benevolence. Not weird enough? Okay! Three represents the lost land of Mu, also considered to be Atlantis. It is a lost civilization written about in ancient texts, Irish mythology, Greco-Roman philosophy, etc. In Taoist cosmology, there are eight trigrams. What the fuck is a trigram? That explain the fundamental principles of reality, all represented by three broken or unbroken lines. Physically, we exist and experience reality in the third dimension. According to occultists, we do things in three to bring them into reality. Three is the number of unbreakable unity, also known as the Trinity, shown in the linking of three circles. Trinity also represents many of the old gods. The Celtic Bridget, not the Overwatch Bridget, the African Ashanti, the three phases of the moon. And three is a powerful part of one of the oldest occult texts in human history, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Thoth is the god with the head of a bird and the, bo the body of a human. He's Egyptian. Let me tell you about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. As old as they are, a lot of New Age stuff is based off of them. Just ask spirit science. There was a time, long ago, when humans existed at a very high level of consciousness. We were interdimensional and were very psychic. Supposedly, Thoth was an immortal Atlantean who arrived in Egypt and was responsible for the birth of the first human civilization. Whether these tablets are real or not is a topic of debate. They appear throughout occult history and are said to have been translated thousands of years ago. Currently, only those translations exist. The tablets themselves are rumored to be in one of many places, including inside the Ark of the Covenant. But here's some excerpts from the translation. From the Key of Wisdom, 
Three holds the key of all hidden magic, creator he of the halls of the dead, sending forth power shrouding with darkness, binding the souls of the children of men. And from the last chapter, Secret of Secrets, Hear ye now of the mystery of nature, the relations of life to earth where it dwells. Know ye, ye are threefold in nature, physical, astral, and mental in one. Three are the qualities of each of the natures, nine in all, as above, so below. In the physical are these channels, the blood which moves in vortical motion, reacting on the heart to continue its beating, magnetism which moves through the nerve paths, carrier of energies to all cells and tissues, a casa which flows through channels, subtle yet physical, completing the channels. Each of the three attorneys tuned with each other, each affecting the life of the body. Form they the skeletal framework through which the subtle ether flows. In their mastery lies the secret of life in the body, relinquished only by the will of the adept when his purpose in living is done. Three are the natures of the astral. Mediator is between above and below. Not of the physical, not of the spiritual, but able to move above above and below. Three are the natures of the mind, carrier it of the will of the Great One, arbitrator of cause and effect in thy life. Thus is formed the threefold being, directed from above by the power of four. Above and beyond man's threefold nature lies the realm of the spiritual self. The power of three of the Triforce. This holy grail of the Legend of Zelda plays on a human phenomenon from the dawn of our consciousness, an obsession with the power of three. Why are there so many connections to this number, from the most prevalent religions to mathematics to nutty occultists to video games? Three exists in Zelda titles, elsewhere as well. The goddesses link Zelda and Ganon, the timeline being split in three. Is it a coincidence? Or was Sigeru on to something? Reading forbidden texts and pretending to be into paganism so he can bang hot wicked chicks? It's food for thought. As of the newest Zelda release, we haven't seen the Triforce. It may not have surfaced for 10,000 years for all we know. But what we do know is that the Triforce will never be forgotten. It is the centerpiece of the Legend of Zelda, and it harkens back back to the earliest times when humans first began to logically piece together the truths of the universe. Three is an unavoidable theme no matter where you look. It is the apex of not just this story, but all stories throughout time. To be lost in a story is a religious experience, and that's why the best ones play off of mythological themes. The Triforce is a symbol of so much more than just power wisdom and courage. It is the symbol of universal truths that are a part of us all. That is what this divine golden icon means. That's the story of the power of three, the story of the Triforce of the Legend of Zelda, the story you never knew. And that's my take on the Triforce. It's connected to some of the oldest aspects of civilization, and I'm pretty stoked on it. You know what else I'm stoked on? Uh, I know, you know. Raid Shadow Legends! Don't forget to check out the link down below to get 50,000 silver and an epic champion for free. That's right, for free. Check it out, uh, you'll be supporting the channel, and uh, I would, you know, you'll have fun as well. I mean, I know you'll love it because I love it, and that's just how it works. And hey, thanks so much to our friends at Raid for sponsoring this video. As you may recall, I am Grant, and uh, I'll see you next time. Or I, I don't want to tell you what to do. There will probably be another Pro Jared video, by the way. So, watch out for that. Bye.